Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Thank you guys for joining me once again. So back in March of 2018, I did a video, and it was entitled Pole Shift Speed Increasing So Fast, NOAA Issues Notification of basically letting everybody know, hey, your GPSs aren't going to work properly. And we've had to make changes ahead of schedule because the poles are shifting. We're talking magnetic pole excursion and an excursion is when the poles shift but then they possibly could bounce back to the original position uh, pole reversal is when they flip and assume a new position we haven't had a complete reversal that stayed uh, in about 780,000 years apparently according to official sources now again as we have been learning more and more as far as the science goes of these things, we, we are inevitably drawing doubt on a lot of the official conclusions, you know, and what we are being told perhaps is not all the truth. Perhaps these things happen much more often uh, than we know. Again, uh, it's, it's a fascinating thing to track, and this is one of the things that so many people in this field are so just so waiting for it bated breath they want to know what's the new numbers showing what's happening you know is it speeding up is it still ongoing where is the magnetic north pole and so you know i encourage you guys to check this video out from uh march of 2018 uh, but we're going to go into what's going on now so here we see earth's magnetic field is acting up geologists don't know why erratic motion of the north magnetic pole forces experts to update model that aids global navigation ahead of schedule now we talked about in a few videos ag ago the fact that the inuits and other natives that live up in the arctic circle have come right out and said something has changed the stars aren't where they used to be the earth is wobbling interesting the bible says the earth will wobble like a drunkard and it is and so how often does this really happen you know we think about the younger dryas uh, extinction we see evidence of asteroid impacts and you know again that's that's back about 11 to 12 thousand years ago it does seem like there's massive extinction events in that time period and also perhaps about every 11 12 thousand years 12,500 years somewhere in that range you know and it's interesting how this all fits into the precession of the equinoxes again over here we see how newsweek earth's magnetic pole is moving quickly towards siberia it's clear something strange is happening we know we are being exposed to a lot more cosmic rays uh, than we have ever in our lifetime certainly and in many generations perhaps thousands of years we have a lot of things going on right now <laughs> some people believe nibiru is in the sky the nemesis system interesting photos we are definitely seeing from around the globe showing either a second sun or perhaps some planets we know f for sure that we're in what we would call a grand solar minimum a period of quietness on the sun where the sun is putting out very very low output the sun is our primary shields for the uh, interaction between the sun and the earth uh, creates basically a protective shield around the earth itself and when the earth when the earth is experiencing for instance a pole reversal uh, the magnetosphere declines when the sun is in a grand solar minimum the magnetosphere declines and thus we are being bombarded with a lot more cosmic radiation than we've ever been before and some say that uvc is hit, is basically hitting the ground and that's supposed to never happen so we have tremendous changes happening on the planet without a doubt as we see here the position of the magnetic north pole is officially changed uh, it's it's wandering and yes you know what the magnetic poles always wander and again uh, as above so below as within so without what's going on inside of the earth is a reflection of all the energy coming to the earth from the outside as well and so all this is completely interconnected and so you know this article 
Uh, we see NOAA has announced the National Centers for Environmental Information has updated the wor World Magnetic Model mid-cycle to reflect unexpected changes in the location of the North Pole. And so we're going to get into a little bit more detail here. This is an interesting article. The role of geomagnetic field intensity in late quaternary evolution of humans and large animals. And basically what it comes to as far as conclusions go is that pole reversals and extinctions seem to go hand in hand. Uh, and that's obviously not a good thing when you're living in a time of a magnetic pole reversal, which most definitely is underway. And again, will it be a full reversal, something we haven't seen according to official sources in 780,000 years? Or will it be just another excursion that snaps back to the original place? We don't know. Nobody knows. You know, all the official sources don't know. Um, ben Davidson, Suspicious Observers, one of the, what most people would say is definitely one of the best researchers uh, on this. He's done extensive work. Uh, you know, he's, he's, his channel is great. I, I, I do appreciate his work very, very much. And, you know, we see world's number one geophysical journal that confirms extinction events are tied to magnetic excursions. World magnetic model forced to be updated prematurely due to exceeding error range. The acceleration of the shift has continued, not slowed down, as was predicted by NOAA in their 2015 release. Of course, they don't want to panic anybody. They, you know, Obviously, they don't want to panic anybody. And if you can see this model that's rolling out, it shows just how far it's gone, going from 1600 to 2015. And at one point in time, it, the magnetic North Pole was located well into Canada, and it's been just rapidly heading towards the actual North Pole. And now we have new figures uh, that are going to give us a clue on where it is. And the big question, which mainstream science would say a magnetic excursion has nothing to do with any sort of crustal shifting of the Earth. Think of an orange and think of that white part of the orange. And think of that white part being completely separated from the inner part and just kind of floating on the surface of the or of the orange. So there are two totally different uh, fields of thought here. One group says there is no, no such thing as a crustal uh, displacement. Uh, basically, it's just all magnetic. Worst thing is your GPSs might not work right. We might have some, you know, grid problems when we get down really low in the magnetosphere. We could have, uh, as we were warned by the government last December, we could have uh, grid failures that might last a long period of time. And so the government said, hey, be ready for six months on your own because you might have to be. Now, crustal displacement theory by Hapgood, Hapgood and Velikovsky uh, says that not only that happens, but the whole crust of the Earth shifts. That's a big difference. That is a huge difference. So you'll get some people that say, it's all fear-mongering. There's no such thing as crustal displacement uh, that's just fear-mongering. And then there are those that are in the Velikovsky and Hapgood uh, camp that say, yeah, crustal displacement happens. And there's a lot of evidence of it. So we have the Chan Thomas story, the Adam and Eve story, which was officially classified by the CIA and then declassified 50 years later, classified in 65, declassified 2015, coincidentally. And uh, in it, it basically is talking about kind of the most horrific scenes you could imagine from the movie 2012 if you guys have seen that where we go from this what we're all used to to kind of this and that of course displaces a ton of water and according to that story what happens is you'll have a two mile high tsunami generated in the pacific ocean that's going to sweep across pretty much everything uh, if you are on top of mount everest maybe you got a chance you know, if you're in the highest point in the Rockies, perhaps you'll watch the water just go a thousand feet below you. Maybe if you're lucky. Or perhaps if you're inside the Earth in a deep underground military base that is completely sealed, uh, you'll be okay. So very, very different points of view on this. 
And what there is a lot of evidence for crustal displacement and massive extinction events. And will it be something like we see in the movie 2012, or the day after tomorrow? Uh, we don't really know. <laughs> Honestly, that's the thing. Uh, opinions really vary on this. And so can you imagine a wall of water two miles high coming in from the Pacific? Well, a lot of you can because you have. And a lot of you guys have seen it in dreams. Uh, it's amazing how many people over uh, the years that this channel has been up have made comments to that fact and shared their dreams. We do have sediments containing fossils formed at sea level, now 8.8 .8 kilometers above sea level. That's a lot. That's like, you know, five miles high, <laughs> you know, four and a half miles high, uh, you know, at some of the highest peaks in this world. Now, is it a natural process that took millions of years, the slow uprising of mountains, as they will tell us? Or was it something that happened in a huge cataclysm almost instantaneously? Again, we don't know. And uh, at the same time, we too also have things that were above the surface down below the surface and we have the case of woolly mammoths that were found with their meals completely intact inside of their bellies and they were all of a sudden flash frozen as if they were taking taken from a region you know for instance say maybe like a california type region and all of a sudden put up into the arctic just instantaneously their entire bodies flash frozen and, of course, then we also have found cities under the oceans in many different places, relics of these cities now lying under the ocean. Of course, we have the legends of Atlantis and Lemuria, Mu, you know, great civilizations that are now down on the bottom of an ocean. So, would a slow, gradual process do that? No, it's got to be something that happens a little bit quicker. Wouldn't you agree? Something that catches people unaware. Well, the update that we're waiting for is coming out on December 10th. And so, gladly and thankfully, we could actually look at the data right now as we go over to NOAA. And so, here we see the World Magnetic, Magnetic Model 2020 NP for North Pole, SP for South Pole. And so looking at the current positions which are given, we could determine basically that the poles are still on the move and in fact have crossed at this point in time they are, the North Pole has crossed the geographic North Pole and is in fact more towards Siberia and is heading over that way and projected to continue heading over that way. So when we look at the movement from 1900 to where we're going to be at 2025, and 2025 is a really key date, uh, Deagle, you guys, Deagle.com. 2025 is huge. It's, it's a big date, you know, and then we also have the Grand X marks the spot when we were talking about the two eclipses and um, you know 2024 is the second eclipse and let me bring that up while I'm thinking about it um, so we're wondering what's really going on here All right, I'm not getting on this one. So there's a big X pattern that comes, and it goes right over the USA. And let's see if I do it again, guys. Thank you for bearing with me. The first one came in August of 2017, and the second one is, is going to be coming in 2024. And this is what we're talking about. April 8th, 2024. So, you know, is this just, uh, is this just nothing, another coincidence, or is this, as some would say, a sign from God, or a sign from Source, Prime Creator, or something else altogether? You know, we, we, we don't really know, but it is interesting that 2024, 2025 uh, time period. 
So the numbers are basically being shown right here. And so, you know, it is still going on at a rapid pace. And there are those that think once we cross the geographic North Pole, then it would not be long before we end up having that, well, that crustal displacement event. So we'll see. We will see. Uh, but it's something to be most definitely aware of. And uh, we look forward to them explaining and saying them, NOAA Na and NASA, you know, what their thoughts are on this. As most definitely we are in completely unprecedented times. And so here again, you can see the movement of the poles, which can be very erratic. And this is a North Pole. Starting over here, it kind of went over this way over here and then just started to make a beeline. And it's been making that beeline for a really long time now and it's actually been increasing. So the speed of this thing has intensified. And when will we get to that point when we might actually have that crustal displacement? That's a big, big question. And those people that don't believe in crustal displacement, uh, you know, just look at the plume uh, that, and so a plume, just for you guys that aren't familiar with the plume, is a spot where magma is rising from deep within the core. And there is a plume that has formed the Hawaiian Islands. And if we look at this plume, Let's see if we get some images here. If we look at this plume, it shows that at some point in time, the islands turned. So when we look at it right here, you see the Hawaiian Islands. This plume stays in place. It doesn't move. It, it's stationary. So this plume at some point in time was here. The only way it could get down here and then shift at about 110 degrees is if there was a crustal displacement event. So right at this period of time, the Earth's crust shifted. And so we see the crusts are always moving. The plates are always in motion. And so are we going to be seeing something like out of 2012? Only time will tell. And I don't think the powers that be will actually tell us, unfortunately, until probably we're in the midst of it, if it does happen. And we've talked about Diehold Foundation. Now, he ties it into a nova, a nova of the sun. He expects it around 2046. Corey Good has said from his contacts that are extraterrestrial in origin that they're expecting uh, the event anytime between now and maybe around 2027. So only time would tell, but most definitely the North Pole is still on the move and the South Pole is as well. So good idea to be prepared, my friends, in any circumstance as always. I look forward to your comments on this. Thank you guys so much for supporting us on Patreon. Even a dollar a month will help the channel stay alive. And also you get to see some videos that don't go up on YouTube. Uh, or support us on Ko-Fi as well. Make sure you did subscribe to the second channel, E Arts, as well. As always, my friends, stay safe out there. God bless and namaste.